This video is sponsored by HubSpot. In this video, I'm going to give you all the updates of Google Ads that happened in 2024 and which are important and you should know about. So sit back, relax and make a note of any update that might be applicable to your business or your type of campaigns and change your Google Ads game. So I have divided the updates in these nine categories and all the links of these updates which describe the update, what happened, what changed, they're in speaker notes here. I'll put the link of this presentation in the description below. So the first category is Pmax. The improvement in Pmax in last two years is drastic and it's very, very impressive. When Pmax launched in the beginning, the performance was not that great. The first update is asset level reporting available for Pmax campaigns finally. Uh, so before we used to do at asset group level and we never used to be able to understand what put if in an asset group we have multiple images and uh, let's say headlines and videos. We never used to understand which one among them is doing better. But now uh, in the with this update, you can do that. Go to your campaigns, uh, performance max campaigns and go to assets and then associations and this assets. You click on it. It will show you breakdown and you can see the key conversion metrics for each creative asset. The second update in Pmax is you can uh, now segment asset group performance. You can conduct deeper analysis of campaign performance, break down asset group performance by time, conversion device and more, which was not possible before you would be only a able to do it on the campaign level. Uh, the third one within Pmax is final URL expansion experiments. So, so now there's an experiment available if you want to with, uh, play around with the final URL expansion that Google decides that okay which URL will be used as a click through. So you don't need to set up separate campaigns and then test it. You can just set up the experiment which is very very helpful honestly. Uh, the second uh, category is demand gen. In this one uh, the first update is you can pin video assets to placements which is really 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 helpful once you are running demand gen and you have multiple videos you can pin one particular form let's say for example in these three videos i can pin this should be the video uh, that should be preferred an in stream or shorts or in feed or all of them so you can do that now the second one is lookalike audience uh, the minimum required uh, size for lookalike segmentation has been reduced from 1000 to just 100 so what it means is in, if in your demand gen you had to create a lookalike audience you needed an audience of 1000 people uh, as a seed audience for Google to give you more uh, to create lookalike audiences, right? The third update in demand gen is manage demand gen campaigns that is uh, scale directly within DV360. Actually, I did a video recently where I highlighted this difference that demand gen can only be running Google Ads and not DV360, but it just uh, changed recently, I think a few weeks ago. Uh, the fourth update within demand gen is demand gen uh, campaigns can now serve on third party video partners as well and not just YouTube and Google properties. The reach has increased a lot now. The fifth update within demand gen is promote the right products to the right audience at the right moment with product feed in demand gen. In your demand gen campaigns, you can attach a feed. So for example, when your ad appears on YouTube, there'll be uh, the feed of your products will be shown below the same video. This leads us to our third category, which is measurement. What you can do now is if you know about DV360, when you run display video campaigns on DV360, you actually can work with third party vendors like IS Media, Double Verify and uh, th companies like that to basically add brand safety and measurement uh, solutions so that you can basically check if your ads are running in a brand safe environment, if they are running actually in the geographies where they are supposed to run and things like that. This was kind of a US of dv360 over google ads but now this has been added to google ads as well but you need to get it whitelisted there's a link in the footer notes here which you can click and uh, for your account you can reach out to the google team and they will whitelist your account the second update within go measurement is google ads data manager so google has added this kind of suite in uh, google ads uh, ui if you click on tools in your google ads account and then go to data manager all your data management controls are in one place even all the third party integrations you have so it, there's nothing new per se but uh, everything is in one place it makes it way way a lot easier to manage and even look for any improvements you want to do now that we are talking about measurement at its impact on our advertising strategies i want to take a minute and tell you about a highly recommended ebook called the state of data driven advertising which is a must read for any marketer who wants to stay ahead of the curve it covers some interesting topics like how to leverage first party data to improve your 
targeting personalize your campaigns and achieve long-term success click on the first link in the description below to download your free copy now this ebook is based on a survey of more than 1200 global marketing professionals uncovering the current state of data driven advertising the growing importance of first party data and proven tools for long-term success you'll be able to understand how marketers are using first party data to crush goals and maximize their return on ad spend my favorite part of the ebook is the section on how to collect and use first party data to improve your advertising you'll discover the highest quality sources for collecting this data and most effective ways to incentivize customers to share their information and this book was created by hubspot who is also sponsoring this video so don't wait and get your free copy now okay that leads us to our fourth section which is updates in within the search so the first update within the search is ai overview placement there's no action needed from your side but when you go to google and you search for something there is sometimes ai overview box appears there but you need to know that your ads from search performance max and shopping can appear within this ai overview tab and i expect it to have higher engagement rate the second update is uh, shopping ads in google lens if somebody is look using google lens for a particular product to search for a particular product Google can show your shopping ads there as well. So overall, this is the way how Google is kind of integrating our ad campaigns within uh, their AI platforms and uh, these tools. And this leads us to our fifth section, which is updates in the app campaigns. So the first one is asset uplift experiments for app campaigns has been launched. If you are an app business, you have been running app UAC campaigns, you'll understand the importance of this update. Now you can basically check uh, asset uplift uh, for app campaigns, you can check for each, let's say you upload a video, you can check what was the uplift and you don't need to set up different campaigns and compare the data. You can just set up experiments and it will tell you exactly after the experiment how much uplift there was and it helps you really a lot in uh, deciding the content for your um, UAC campaigns because UAC, it's a, it's a world of its own. The second update is seasonality build adjustment available, which is very, very important. Again, if you are an e-commerce app or uh, running UAC engagement campaigns or app install campaigns i have worked with a lot of app first companies who basically in food delivery e-commerce and stuff and i know it's a struggle for example in this region ramadan is a huge seasonality uh, and we used to struggle that okay do we spend less do we spend more how do we adjust our bids now you can basically do the seasonality bid adjustments and uh, select the dates and everything google will automatically check the seasonality and automatically adjust the bids and the third update in app campaigns is as well that you have enhanced asset reporting now before for example sometimes you will see all the conversions allocated to deep links and there were different logics why google used to do that but now it's uh they have added more finish to the reporting you can actually see the breakdown uh in in a much much better way and this leads us to our sixth section which is creative solutions you can if you want to generate static ads you don't have to go to designers anymore you can just with a text prompt create these ads google will automatically adjust about the size and everything all you have to do is give up particular prompt text prompt and google will come up with your ad and the good thing is you can do it in your style you can upload reference images as well your branding colors and stuff like that and the second update is uh i have never seen this before in google ads that now you have an integration with uh, platforms like canva smartly pencil and typeface so if you are for example creating your uh, display banners in canva you can integrate you can uh, link your accounts and automatically basically onboard your creatives from canva into google ads it has a lot of benefits it eases your job and it reduces the steps of downloading the creatives uploading and avoids any mistakes this leads us to our seventh section which is updates in the youtube campaigns this is huge because um when i remember in certain campaigns we saw that that in shorts placement our videos used to do a lot in terms of app installs and for one e-commerce website as well but there was no way to run a uh, shorts only campaign so now that's possible and i'm sure this one has made a lot of people very very happy and the second update within youtube is uh now you can show viewers branded qr codes on youtube connected tv you might have seen it if you're on a connected tv you're watching the ad towards the end of the video uh you can just show this qr code which is kind of a lot of uh, strategists used to think about it but i don't know it was a very simple solution why a lot of people didn't realize this before uh, even uh, digital banners people used to say okay how do we know how many people actually saw this ad how many people 
uh, actually converted because of the ad but some smart advertisers used to do uh, have this qr code big qr code on their ads in their billboards and outdoors and then they used to measure how many people came from this qr code how many conversions at all but now this is possible on youtube as well youtube connected tv was con considered to be very very awareness uh, focused but now this is moving towards conversions as well you can have a qr code somebody likes the ad or offer or the product they scan the qr code they come and convert and you can measure this this leads us to our eighth section which is updates in the display campaigns the first update is that the x or twitter inventory has been plugged into a uh, google display network now your ads can appear on if you, the, the display ads you're running on uh, google ads they can appear on twitter as well don't be surprised because that's part of uh, google display network now even your shopping ads even on twitter you can see some shopping ads like the product catalog uh, or the product feed that's actually from um, google ads shopping campaigns and uh, on twitter you will see both uh, ads from your campaigns on google ads as well as dv360 just fyi okay the second update is very interesting as well it actually is a part of the creative updates but within your display campaigns if you have static banners using google ai uh, you can actually animate those images and more make them more uh, interesting i have tried some it's not that great but I, I expect it to be better very very soon and this leads us to our ninth one which is updates in uh, shopping campaigns and this is also very interesting if you sell apparel now what in google shopping what you can do is you can try, try this virtual try on you can basically try your products on virtually created ai created models so now if you're a fashion brand you don't need to hire models you don't need to invest in photographic sessions and they are quite good actually and the good thing is you can try these models for multiple sizes for a small uh, size it will accordingly adjust the image and the model and for an xxl it will automatically adjust but for now it's only available for tops i think it will be available for maybe footwear and others as well very very soon so i hope you found any of the updates which you just want to go and test now and i hope it was helpful thank you so much and i will see you in the next one